Hello friends, welcome to EPG Path Shala. I am Poonam Chavla, an assistant professor with Maharaja Agrasen Institute of Management Studies in Rohini. Today, we are going to discuss on the interesting and intriguing subject of management development methods. Let me tell you the inclusions of the module. They are introduction, the purpose of management development and methods of management development followed by a summary. Let me give you an introduction of the topic. Management development has emerged as one of the eminent and complex tasks in the field of human resource management. In the dynamic business world of today, the only sustainable competitive advantage with an organization is its workforce. Therefore, proactive organizations make every bounden attempt to retain competent employees for desired results. They leave no stone unturned in developing their current and prospective employees so that they can completely utilize their potential for meeting their individual as well as organizational goals. Management development is one such method through which managers in an organization enhance their knowledge, skills, abilities to improve their performance as well as behavior at workplace. It not only enhances the skill set of managers for current job but also prepares them for future tasks which may require specialized knowledge and skills. Let us look at the definition of management development. Management development is a method through which managers in an organization enhance their knowledge, skill and ability to improve their performance at the workplace. It is one of such methods through which managers in an organization increase their skills and abilities so that they can perform well in the workplace. It not only enhances the skill set of managers for current job but also prepares them for the future tasks which may require specialized knowledge and skills. Let us discuss the purpose of management development. Management development is used to enhance the knowledge, skills and aptitude of executives so that they can perform more productively on their current and future positions. It is also done to make sure that organizations have an adequate supply of personnel to serve its future requirements. To open avenues and provide opportunities for managers and help them in their career advancement. To equip executives with latest trends and knowledge so that they can perform more efficiently and also prevent obsolescence of the knowledge. Methods of executive development can be divided into two parts. First, on-the-job methods and second, off-the-job methods. On-the-job methods include coaching, understudy assignments, job rotation, multiple management and committee assignments. Let us discuss the first on-the-job method that is coaching. Coaching involves appointment of the immediate superior or an experienced manager as a coach and he or she advises the subordinates in solving the managerial problems or issues posed to him. It is imminent to mention that the coach only guides not teaches the subordinates. Thirdly, he facilitates him to develop his own approaches to provide solutions for the issues under concern. The advantage of using coaching as a te technique for management development is that the trainee is exposed to practical experience 
and furthermore it increases his confidence and morale while he takes complex decisions. The disadvantages associated with this method are that the supervisor in some cases may not be able to perform his duty as a coach and neglect his subordinate. Understudy assignment. Understudy assignments are used by organizations to develop the employee's abilities so that he or she can fill a specific position. In the case of an understudy, usually the trainee is prepared to perform the tasks of his superior. Trainee is the person who may be undertaking the duties and responsibilities of the particular position in the near future. This technique of understudy may bear similarities with coaching, but in the case of an understudy, the manager may choose an incumbent and train him to learn his job, as he may be the prospective successor for his or her position. It is advantageous to use this method because it prepares competent workforce to take key positions whenever a vacancy arises due to promotion, transfer or retirement. This method has mutual benefits for the understudy as well as the manager as the understudy gets prepared for the future position and the manager is also relieved of some of his workload. However, the method of understudy assignment has its own demerits like the understudy may become very overconfident that he or she may think that the competition for promotion is over and he is, has got the complete potential. The other employees may see selection of a particular employee as an understudy as an act of favoritism. There are chances that the knowledge of the understudy shall be bound by the knowledge of the superior only. Job Rotation Job rotation involves logical effort to transfer a manager from one task to another in a planned way. These are lateral transfers that facilitate the employee to gather wide variety of knowledge and skills across various functions and broaden his outlook towards other jobs as the executive can emphasize and appreciate the issues faced by other managers. A robust job rotation policy helps the organization to learn about the hidden potential of employees and it can use the skills and abilities of the employee completely to achieve the firm's objectives. Job rotation is also viewed as a potential source of motivation as research suggests that employees prefer to carry out variety of tasks instead of a single task to avoid boredom and monotony. The policy of job rotation has its own set of disadvantages like Productive work may suffer because of interruption caused by the executive who makes an effort to adjust to the new task or position. Multiple management. Multiple management refers to establishment of permanent advisory committees which discusses matters of prominence in business and makes plausible suggestions and recommendations to the top management. Sometimes organization establish a junior board of directors who discuss all the issues which are in the purview of senior management. 
Now this acts as a potential source for executives who may have an opportunity to succeed as the board members. It facilitates the top management in identifying their successors and do succession planning and moreover it provides the junior management a practical outlook about working in teams and decision making. Now let us look at committee assignments. In this method ad hoc committees are made to discuss a specific subject and make useful recommendations and suggestions. Now let us discuss some of the job methods. The of the job methods are special courses or classroom training, seminars and conferences, sensitivity training, role playing, programmed instruction or learning, simulation methods. Simulation methods can be further divided into in basket techniques, case study and management game. Let us take up special classroom techniques. The managers and executives nowadays are promoted and encouraged to attend special courses which are designed by organizations with the aid of experts from professional institutes. In many cases, the executives are prompted and sponsored by organizations to attend management development programs organized by various institutions for upgradation of knowledge and skills of the managers. Let us come to conferences and seminars. Conferences refer to coming together of learned individuals on a common platform in an organized manner in which management conferences are held. Next is sensitivity training. This training is also termed as laboratory training because it takes place under controlled conditions. The effort in such training is to develop sensitivity to behavioral patterns of self and others. This type of training is given to expatriates in multinationals who work in global locations so that they are sensitized towards the various cultures that they work in. Role playing. Role playing is an effective technique which is primarily used to develop skills of human relations and provide leadership training. This technique also helps an individual to gain knowledge about their own behavior and its impact on others. In the role playing method, a prototype situation is created and people are assigned different roles and the person has to act on the assigned role. Role playing has various benefits. For instance, it provides an opportunity for enhancing interpersonal skills and also gives an opportunity to put theory into practice. Sometimes the whole exercise is recorded so that the participants can watch their performance and perform a self check on their strengths and weaknesses. The next slide gives a pictorial representation of role playing. Slide number 31. Programmed instruction or learning. It refers to self-teaching method in which the learner uses self-instruction and moves in an established step-by-step -step logical method to gain knowledge about complex principles and theories at his own speed. Linear programming is more commonly used in comparison to branching programming. The father of linear programming is Skinner and the idea of linear programming is based on the theory of operant conditioning. It states that it is possible to provide a certain direction 
to the human behavior and to achieve the same activities it needs to be divided into smaller steps wherein each step needs to be studied and analyzed. The primary assumption behind linear programming is that the learner is motivated to learn because the content is presented in smaller units and immediate confirmation of the responses also motivate the candidate and promote better learning. On the contrary, in the branching programming which was proposed by Norman L. Crowder, the learner is provided with specific written text material. Once the instruction is provided, a multiple choice question is generated and the alternative answers are listed with specific page numbers. The learner chooses one of the answers and moves to the mentioned page number. If the answer is correct, the student learns from the new material and if the answer is incorrect, the mentioned page provides more explanation and the student is provided with material to develop a better background. In practical terms, this system can become very complex and cumbersome. Though programmed instruction provides the learner with the opportunity to learn at his own pace and also provide constant feedback. This method, however, is considered to be very costly and time consuming, and in many cases, there are chances that monotony or boredom may creep in, destroying the very purpose of the technique. Simulation Methods A simulation method makes a sincere attempt to create a situation which closely resembles a real-life situation, wherein individuals can learn from their own mistakes. It resembles conducting trials or test runs and are divided into three types of techniques namely in basket method, case study and management games. Let us look briefly at in basket method. This method is used to develop decision making skills of an executive. The material that requires the attention of the executive are put in the basket and the executive under trainee has to act like a manager and provide plausible solutions for all the issues lying in the basket. Case study method. Case study can be defined as the depiction of a real life managerial event which needs instant attention of the executive. In this simulation technique, a case is presented to an individual or a group for identifying plausible and suitable solutions to a problem. Management or business games. A management game is a classroom learning technique wherein groups of learners or trainees compete with each other to meet the pre-stated objectives. Let us look at the management development methods used at GE. Crotonville is the management development university of GE. It is developed to churn efficient and better managers. Managers learn everything in this university from time management to mindfulness and self-regulation. GE believes investing in its executives is beneficial in the long run. Proton will highlights the power of executive development and is a classic example of the same. The summary of the module. The chapter provides an insight into the concept and purpose of management development. It critically discusses the methods which have been used for management development 
and is divided into two sections you can say on the job and off the job methods wherein on the job involve coaching job rotation under study and off the job methods involve simulation methods like case study business games role playing sensitivity training organization use these management development methods to equip their current employees with latest knowledge and skills so that it can use its potential to meet its organizational objectives thank you very much i hope you understood the module well